Okay guys, so what we're going to do today is look a bit more into animation and specifically animating um, a character. Um, so what I've done is I've just created this third person template. Um, I've just got this one other thing in here, which is from a, a previous video on animations that I did. Um, otherwise, it's just a blank third person template. If I push play, obviously we have this default um, kind of mannequin character. Um, and we're going to change this to our own character and change the uh, movement animations as well. OK, so we're going to look at how to do that. We are, as you already saw, going to use this website called Mixamo. OK, Mixamo is a really useful um, web application. So um, one of its most powerful things, I think, is being able to upload your own characters. OK, so it does have um, a relatively large collection of its own characters that you can use. Um, but you can also upload your own character and it will rig your character to any of its animations that it has available. If we go over to the animations tab, there's um, a good range, um, well over 100 animations in here that you can use okay, in our projects. So we're going to look at how we can use these. So first off, I'm, you just need to download yourself a character, whether this is your own character that you've uploaded or one of the preset characters from Mixamo, just choose a character. Preferably, you want it to currently have no animations on because you just want to download the character model itself first before you start um, downloading its animations. It just makes things a little easier to manage. Um, if you have been looking at these animations, um, just let's pick any odd one here. Uh, and you want to go back to its sort of T pose without animations assigned to it, you can just click this little X button there and it'll go back to the T pose. Cool. So once you've got your character in its T pose, hit download. Don't worry about changing any settings, just keep it as it is uh, and hit the download button there. Okay, and that's going to download the asset. Um, you can see I've done this a couple of times already because I've just been delivering this to uh, some other people. So we want to, once it's downloaded, come over to Unreal. Uh, and I would suggest making a new folder for your character. So I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this one Paladin. OK, in here we want to import our um, Paladin. So um, well, as you can see, I've done this a couple of times. Uh, let's just download the uh, original one that I did. OK, so just make sure with your importing settings, skeletal mesh should be on by default. Just make sure skeletal mesh is on. Um, we don't need to worry too much about animations right now because uh, I'm going to turn that off actually because we're only um, importing the character. OK, and then hit import all. Get rid of any mess messages that come up. And here we have um, our bits and bobs for our character. So. These ones with the red line, these are the sort of JPEG images of the um, material, like the, the textures themselves. So you've got your color map for the uh, character, you've got your normal map and a specular channel map there, and you've got the material, which is a kind of combination of these things that make it into a, a material that's applied to the character. You've got our skeleton, uh, you've got our physics asset, and you've got the skeletal mesh itself. Okay. So all of these things on their own uh, are not particularly useful. Um, we need to kind of do something with them. So what's nice about the third person template is we can go to third person, go to the blueprints, and um, we can open up the third person blueprint, which is, of course, already created for us, this character that can uh, move around. And it has a skeletal mesh already assigned to it. We can see that here, which is this mannequin model. So we want to change this now to our new model that we've imported. So I'm going to go over to the skeletal mesh asset and change this now to my Paladin character. Uh, there he is. OK, so he's there in the game in his T-pose. I'm going to compile that um, and I'm just going to do a little test. So let's just play the game. We'll see I've got our character in there, but when we move around, he's just going to be T-posing his way around things. Uh, you can interact with stuff like that. Yeah, he doesn't have his animations on. So unfortunately, because this character uses a different skeleton, we can't just assign any old uh, animation from the mannequin to this one. It doesn't quite work that way, unfortunately. So what we want to do is get some animations for our character from Mixamo. So I'm going to go to animations now. And we're going to use just two animations for this exercise. We're going to use an idle animation and a running animation. 
So if I just have a look through here, let's say this idle animation, that'll do for me. You know, you can have a look through lots of other ones. Um, if you want to have a look at changing up the animation, there are some settings you can play around with here. Um, just play around with them and see what they do, really. I think overdrive makes it go faster. Arm space makes the arms move up and down, should you want to change them. I don't want to, though, so I'm just going to hit download. Um, and then what you have here is an option to download with skin or without skin. So the with skin option means that it will um, download the character model again. I don't want to do that. Okay, I just want the animation, so I'm going to download it without the skin. Okay, I'm going to hit download. Okay, and there's my idle in brackets two for me there. So let's go back to Unreal, back to my content drawer, my Paladin folder, and import the idle animation. Okay. When we're importing the animation, just make sure that the skeleton is set to your character skeleton, this this character skeleton we're working with. Uh, and that's all you really need to worry about. Hit import all. And I can see here that that idle animation is imported. If you double click it, you can have a little preview of that animation. Perfect. Back to Mixamo again. And now I want one for run. So um, should we pick a nice running animation? Um, slow run. That should be OK. He looks like he's got a lot of armor on and he might run slowly. That kind of makes sense. OK, so now with the running animation, the most important thing with this is that the animation is in place. OK, it's super important that you change it to in place. If not, um, well, when you saw when we were T-posing around, the actual character movement is there already within the game. If there's also movement with the movement within the animation, then, you know, that's going to mess the animation up. It's going to start jumping around all over the place. It's not going to look good. So you need to have it in place. OK, again, if you want to adjust the speed, maybe you want it to move a bit faster. Should we crank that up to about 70? You want to know that's a bit too much. 60 maybe. OK, that's fine. We'll, we'll live with that. Let's hit download. Again, we need it without skin. Hit download. OK, and that one is slow run. Let's go back to Unreal. Import slow run. Make sure our paladin is our skeleton. And him, hit import all. And there we go. There's our slow run that isn't quite so slow anymore. Lovely. OK, now what we want to do, we can't unfortunately just kind of plug those animations into it and expect it to be able to work. It doesn't know how to transition between those animations, when to transition between those animations and things like that. So we need to create a couple of things to make this work. One of them, the first thing, is going to be something called a blend space, which is going to essentially blend those two animations together. Um, so I'm going to right click in here, go to animation. Um, don't worry about using this blend space one first of all. This one's uh, more complex than what we actually need. If we go into legacy, we can get this blend space 1D. If you're just blending between two animations, then this is all you need. Okay, so a simplified version of that one. So blend space 1D, paladin skeleton, and then call it uh, paladin blend space or whatever suits you. Okay, within here. We have this graph along the bottom and a preview of our character. So this graph at the current time is based on nothing. Okay, so we want this to be based on the speed the character is moving. So at zero, it wants to be in its idle, and at, at whatever speed it wants to be running. So come over here to horizontal axis and change this one's name to speed. You see now this is based on speed. Uh, the minimum value is going to be zero. So when it's idle, it's at zero speed. And the maximum value wants to be 500. OK, that maximum value 500 is the default movement speed of this character here. I can prove that to you if I go to character movement um, and I go to max walk speed. There it is, 500 OK, centimeters per second. That's what that's based on, 500 centimeters per second. Great. And then um, you probably want to turn on snap to grid. It just makes managing this a bit easier. So we want our idle animation. Click and drag that 
to the left hand side okay so at zero speed it's going to use the idle animation get our running animation and i actually like to chuck that into the middle okay it doesn't need to be at 500 speed necessarily to be fully running okay um, to preview this blend if you hold control on your keyboard and just move your mouse from left to right you can now see that it's created this seamless transition between that idle animation into running. Okay. Lovely. And this is where, you know, if you had um, idle, walk, run, sprint, you might have different animations for different levels of speed. Okay. Cool. That's all for now, though. Um, let's save that. I'm happy with that. That's the blend space done. I can close that down. Back into my content drawer, I now need to create something that's going to, you know, tell it how to use those animations based on that speed. So I need to right click here and make an animation blueprint. Okay, again, pick our skeleton. I'm going to call this Paladin Anim BP. Okay, again, or whatever suits you. So we open up our animation blueprint. And we have this thing called an output pose, so we need to tell it how to generate our final output, essentially. So we want to drag in our blend space, there it is that we just made. Okay, if you can't see that straight away, just make sure you're in the asset browser. Okay, we can hook that up to there. And then this needs to be based on something that's called speed, right? So we don't have a variable for this yet, so I'm going to need to create one. So I'm going to go to variables, and I'm going to call it speed. Um, one thing Unreal Engine is, is good at with its types of variables is color coding them. So we can see that that's a green variable type. Okay, so if I look at my types of variables, I know that that needs to be a float. Okay, so I can make it a float, drag a reference to it up here, and plug that into there. Hit compile, and you should see your graph there from the blend space, and then this happening over there. Okay, so now whatever this speed variable is, is going to tell our blend space which animation to use based on that speed, okay, to create our final output pose. But currently we have nothing which is going to tell this variable what speed we're running at, you know, what that's going to be. Okay, at the moment that's just going to stay zero forever. So we need to switch over to our event graph now to actually tell it how to set that speed based on the movement. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Leave these two here because we are going to use these in a minute. We're going to come up here and initialize the animation. So event blueprint initialize animation. The animation it's initializing is for the character model, right? So we're going to cast to the third person character. That's what my character blueprint is called. And then we're going to get this one, try get pawn owner, make that the object. Okay, from there, what we now need to do is that speed is going to be based on what's called the velocity of the character and the vector length. So in order to get that information, we need to create a reference to this character as a, its own variable. So to do that, we right click here and promote this guy to a variable. Okay, so it gives us our set up here. Uh, we could rename that, but I don't think we necessarily need to. Drag this in now, because we've got this, this in our variables, right? We've got a variable for our uh, player character, and then we can get that reference. Great, so now from here, we can get the information we need. So the first thing we need is to get the velocity. Okay, it's a weird one to get velocity, because Normally they, it shows up here what you've typed in, but we need to actually scroll down to the bottom and there it is, get velocity. So the velocity is essentially the, it works in centimeters per second. Okay, so the velocity that character is moving is that, that range that we gave, somewhere between zero and 500 centimeters per second. So that's the information it's getting uh, of the, the, the character. Okay, so it's running, it's gonna get that velocity. Then we need the vector length. Okay, so vector is essentially, um, uh, you know, the, the, the direction or, or the length between point A and point B. 
essentially. So that combined information will be able to tell us what that speed variable needs to be. So we then need to go set speed. Okay, so that will set whatever the velocity is based on the character and everything, it will set that speed variable. So it's somewhere between zero and 500, which will then set this guy and tell it how to use the blend space and then how to generate an output pose. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. <laughs> So lastly, we just need to reuse this guy here, which we had in the beginning, this update uh, uh, blueprint update animation, and tie that into set speed. Hit compile, and you'll get this stuff going on here. That's absolutely fine. And you'll have your preview here with the idle animation running. Brilliant. So that is our um, blueprint animation done for now. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second just to talk about some other things. But now we can go back to our character and we can change. You can see here, we're using an animation blueprint, but it's still using the one from the old model. So I wanna change this to my Paladin animation blueprint that I made. There we go, hit compile. And now if I run my game, you can see that it's using the idle animation. And then when I run along, it's using my running animation. Okay, brilliant. So this is going to have some teething issues, one of them being jumping, because jumping is going to be a bit weird. We don't have the jump animations assigned. Okay. Um, what I would do, it if, if, with jumping, what you would need to do is you need three types of animations. You need going from zero to jumping up, you need your hanging midair animation, and you need your fall into a ground animation. It's three animations there. Okay. Um, if you wanted to do the jumping, and if you wanted to also tie in something like uh, like an attack animation or a crouch animation, those kinds of things, then you need to go beyond what we've done here, and you need to create something called a state machine. Okay, now this video isn't gonna go into state machines, okay, but there will be one in the future about how to do that if you're interested. For now, we're just gonna stick with this for this exercise. Okay, but what you could also do, you know, if you, um, you know, not every game needs a character to jump. So you could go into your event graph for your character. You could come down here to the, the jump mechanics, hold Alt and click these to just detach those, compile it, and then your character just simply won't be able to jump. You know, it's a bit of a cop out, but <laughs> if you don't, you always, you know, you don't always need to have your character jumping. Okay. Um, so that's really all for now, okay, just to review, we used Mixamo to get a character model, but you could also, of course, upload your own characters to this. We got an idle and a running animation, and we imported those into Unreal. We made a blend space, which is blending those two animations together. We made an animation blueprint, which is saying, um, based on this speed, um, adjust how you're using the blend space to create an output and then of course we uh, told it how to work out that speed based on the velocity and vector length of the character okay hopefully that was useful with getting started with um, animations and uh, yeah that is all for now